Hello, and welcome to the Halo Forge Epidemic. This is PsychoDuck, and I'm here on Halo 2 Anniversary's Forge Canvas Skyward, here to show you guys a little bit of the functionality of some of the new tools and other features associated with Halo 2 Anniversary's Forge. Now, I've already shown you guys a, a bit of an overview of what to expect from the canvases and the objects at your disposal, but being familiar with the Forge tools is also really important. So the first thing you'll notice is in the lower right-hand corner, uh, the budget is replaced by object count, and this is just a hard object count of how many objects you can have on the map. Uh, and there are individual object counts for different object categories, but you can see they're much larger than ever before. So we can have 200 blocks, 200 bridges, 200 decorative, 200 doors, etc. We can have two, or 100 of these giant terrain pieces. So that's really exciting. Next you'll see in the upper center of the screen we have the performance meter. Now this is going to approximate performance of your map as far as avoiding things like frame rate drops and whatnot. Uh, and <laughs> I spent a little bit of time trying to place as many objects as I could on screen at once and uh, could not even get the performance meter to budge. So I'll have to get back to you guys if I learn any more on how that works definitively. Uh, next we have the d-pad functionality which is basically just hotkeys for uh, different uh, options within Forge. So, of course, we have duplicate object like we're used to. Uh, you can lock the object. You can reset the orientation and then up on the D-pad just takes you into player mode, generates lighting really quickly, and it takes you back into monitor mode. So, if you pull up the B button, or the B menu, we have several options here. The first one is drop to ground, which is basically just gonna snap whatever object you're holding right down to whatever the game determines as the ground surface. So in this case, uh, I have this large grass plane down here. The next option is drop and align to ground, which does the same thing, but it changes the object's orientation to align with whatever object is the ground. Uh, next is edit coordinates, which I think we're all used to. Uh, it's a little bit snappier than it has been in the past, so that's nice. Next, and this is a big one, is magnets. And magnets were introduced in Halo 4, but uh, they were, you know, kind of clunky at times and didn't always work as we'd expect. So now you'll see there are more magnets on most objects, and the magnets just are a lot more responsive. You're going to see it magneting onto, you know, the, the, the part of the piece that you want it to make it onto much more often so uh, there's just some nice added functionality here and it just works a little better the next option is something new and this is movement snap so this is pretty cool because basically it allows you to place all objects aligned to a grid so if I edit coordinates here and I just plop this object down if I duplicate it uh, I can move, uh, you know, I, these objects along on a grid, so. Although it doesn't seem to be quite uh, foolproof, but it, it's, uh, I, I don't know, it's, it's some interesting functionality. So that's a nice little feature. And uh, next, of course, we have lock, which you can access through the D-pad. You have unlock all, and then you have options for deleting by palette. And you also have uh, trait zone properties. So the trait zone uh, properties work exactly as they have in the past, although I did see uh, in the appearance category, visual effect you can have on your Spartan. We now have Juggernaut and Spirit of Fire in addition to others we've had in the past. I'm not sure exactly what those look like just yet, but Spirit of Fire was the ship in Halo Wars, I believe. So that's all of the B menu functionality. But then, of course, another big thing is we have zoom back, so that's just really nice for being a bit more precise with your editing. Uh, and we also have precision editing back. So when you go into precision editing, your cursor changes, your monitor moves a lot slower, and uh, you know it's much more precise, as you would expect. So instead of moving an object really quickly, it moves much slower. And this also applies to rotation, so it's really great for making fine adjustments to rotation if you're not using uh, specific angles and uh, coordinate snap. 
So uh, yeah, this is the gist of what to expect from the new tools in Forge. There's nothing too crazy here, but it's just a lot of added, streamlined, and improved functionality that's just going to make everything a bit easier and uh, you know a, a bit uh, less clunky. So uh, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with in this new Forge. Stay tuned right here for more basic tutorials as well as in-depth tutorials, map features, custom games, and more. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.